There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about how we can calculate cell potential from using the reduction potential tables. In this video, we're going to cover the next dot point, which is all about batteries in this case. So I'll read the actual dot point. It says, gather and present information on the structure and chemistry of a dry cell or a lead cell and evaluate it, A, in comparison to one of the following, button cell, fuel cell, vanadium redox cell, lithium cell, liquid junction photovoltaic device, and B, in terms of chemistry, cost, and practicality, impact on society, and the environmental impact. So what we have to do is we've got A and B. We need to be able to, first of all, choose either or, so either the dry cell or the lead acid cell. And I've chosen in this video, we're going to cover the dry cell, but it doesn't really matter. You can also cover the other one. And you need to compare whatever you've chosen with one of the following, just one. Right? So with either one of these, and I've chosen the button cell. So what I'll do in this video is I'll, I'll compare the dry cell to the button cell. And you don't need to know more than two of these, so one of each of these. If you memorize or if you remember more of them, then, I mean, you can do that, but it's just a bit of a waste of time. So I, in this case, dry cell, comparing dry cell to button cell, and you have to evaluate it, so you have to see, you know, are they both useful or would one replace the other? And you also have to talk about the chemistry cost and impact on society and the environmental impact when it comes to both of these different batteries. So I'll start with the dry cell, and what I mean by the dry cell are these types of batteries, so your double A batteries or your triple A batteries. So these are the very widely used batteries. And now when it comes to the button cell, these are the smaller ones, so the ones which are usually used for watches and the like, so the ones which are quite small. And you'll have to cope with one of my drawings. Again, I'm not the, not the best artist, but these are my attempts at drawing the actual batteries. The insides, so you can just look at the insides of the batteries because we have to compare the chemistry. So I'll start with labeling some of these things. In this case, first of all, this was our dry cell. So these are the triple A battery cells. And the other one was our button cell. In this case, it's a silver, a silver button cell because it has silver inside. All right, so there's a couple of things that we need to label. We need to label the anode and the cathode. The cathode is this here. This is the cathode. So this rod here is a, it's called a manganese dioxide rod. Manganese dioxide rod, which is the cathode. Our anode is just zinc itself. So this this here, and you can see not the, the dark gray, but the light gray inside is our anode, which is zinc. So zinc is our anode, manganese dioxide is our cathode, and we have ammonium chloride, which is our electrolyte. So this is our electrolyte here. Electrolyte. Our positive terminal is up here, so this is our positive one is, actually I'll start with negative, negative is here, negative terminal, and a positive terminal is there, which means the direction of electron flow will be from negative to positive this way. Now this is, uh, you should know your cathode, your anode, and your electrolyte for the different batteries you've chosen. You also should compare the voltage, so I'll also first go for the actual button cell and label each of those parts with the button cell as well. So we had our silver oxide rod, which is meant to be this white white paste here, or the rod here. And this was our cathode. So that is where reduction occurs. These ones will gain electrons. We have again our zinc powder, which is our anode. At our anode, we, um, oxidation occurs. So here, electrons will be lost. So electrons will go from here from the zinc to the silver. Our electrolyte is potassium hydroxide paste. So this here is our electrolyte. Electrolyte. And that's just a red thing in the middle. And this is potassium K for potassium and OH for hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. 
and then we have our positive terminal here and our negative terminal here. So you're gonna have electrons flowing from negative to positive, so in, in that direction, in that direction. When it comes to how much volt they produce, um, this battery the dry cell produces 1.5 volts, whereas the button cell produces 1.6 volts, but it's very similar. So overall, there's not much of a difference between the two cells in terms of how much voltage they produce, so how much, how fast electricity flows, or how much electricity they produce in a certain given time. Um, but what you also need to know is you also need to be able to know the anode and cathode half equations. When it comes to these kind of questions that are six, five, six, seven mark questions, it's always good to give chemical reactions and chemical equations, and you should know your anode and cathode half equations for the batteries you've chosen. So at the anode, this is where oxidation occurs, so this is the year oxidation. And remember, oxidation was the gain, uh, sorry, the loss, the loss of electrons, loss of electrons, and at your cathode we had reduction, which was your gain of electrons. So zinc goes from zinc, so again I'm going to write the oxidation states in yellow. Zinc here is elemental, so it's zero, and whatever the ion is, is its oxidation state on the other side, so it's plus two. So it's gone from zero to plus two, so its oxidation state has increased, so it's been oxidized. Or another way to look at it is lost electrons. So it's gone from zinc to zinc ions, and it's lost two electrons. So zinc has been oxidized. And then this seems to be, it looks a bit more complicated than what we've had in the past, but you need to remember the rule when it comes to compounds. In a compound, the charges, the oxidation charges, have to equal up to be zero. So all these together have to be zero. And we know that each oxygen has an oxidation state of minus two. So if you've got two oxygens, it's got a minus four on this side. And then we need to, we need to know that overall, the plus and minus have to be equal to make it a zero. So we know that manganese will have a plus four. So the oxidation state for manganese in our reactants is plus four. We can kind of ignore this because this is the most important part, the plus four. And we can see what change we've had here. So here we have, again, this have against its compound, so it has to equal up to zero. We've got three oxygens, each minus two. So overall it's minus six. We know we have to have equal amounts. So minus six, the, these two manganese equal up to plus six. Because we've got two of them, each one is half of it. So two times three, so each is plus three. And so we've got our manganese gone from plus four for one to plus three for one, which means overall it's been reduced. Its oxidation number has been reduced, or another way of looking at it, it's gained these two electrons. So reduction is gain of electrons, or another way of looking at it is, is a reduction in the oxidation number from plus four to plus three. When it comes to the silver button cell, we've gone from zinc elemental, so that's zero, to this zinc dihydroxide compound. Again, it has to equal up to zero. We know that each of these hydroxides, we can see that charge here, is minus one. So two of them together will be minus two. And then to equal that to zero, we're going to make sure we have our zinc being plus two, which means its oxidation state for zinc here is plus two. So we've gone from zero to plus two. So this has been the oxidation part. And we can also see that by it gaining and uh, losing electrons. These are the electrons that are lost. So zinc has been oxidized. And here, same principle, we have a compound that has to equal up to zero. Here we've got minus two for our oxygen. Oxygen is always minus two. And then we've got, have to have plus two for the silver, the two silvers together. And each individual silver will be plus one. And then in the products, silver is by itself. So silver is an elemental zero. So it's gone, each silver here was plus one in our reactants and zero in our products. So we've gone from plus one to zero, so it has been reduced. Another way of looking at it is it's gained these electrons. What I explained just now, you do not need to know for your exam. I was just going over a revision of how to work with oxidation states. What you do need to know is you need to know your anode and your cathode half equations. So you can just memorize these half equations because they will always be good to put into a five, six, seven 
point exam question. Um, when it comes to cost and practicality, for the dry cells, so the A and the AAA batteries, they're very cheap to produce, which is good, but it also has a very short half-life. The reason why is because it's ammonium chloride will actually attack and break down the zinc, so it's not going to last for too long. On the other hand, our silver button cell has a high cost, it has silver in it, so it's going to be very expensive to produce, but it has a very long sh shelf life, so it'll last for a long time. But also, one advantage is it's quite small, so we can fit into small things. In terms of the impact in society, we have it's used in a wide variety of appliances. So if you remember the Windows A and the AAA batteries, they're basically in, in more or less every single, not every single, but majority of appliances, electrical appliances have these batteries. So without these batteries, we would have we would have a lot less portable things because they're extremely important. Now these silver button cells, they're used in watches, cameras, and hearing aids. They're used, still used quite a bit, but because they're so expensive, they're not produced as much. But they're used in small things, so we can't fit a A or AAA battery into watches and hearing aids. So we use those metal silver button cells instead because they're very small. Impact on the environment for both of these, for, for the actual dry cell, it's not toxic, so that's very good. It doesn't have a big impact on the environment, a negative impact. But it's also non-recyclable, so we can't recycle it. But overall, that's not a massive problem because it's not toxic. Similar thing for your silver button cell, it's also not toxic. It should be recycled, and the reason why is because of that AG. AG is silver. We want to recycle our silver because otherwise it would be quite expensive. So we do recycle most of our silver button cells if we can. The only one negative part with when it comes to silver button cells, it has this potassium hydroxide electrolyte. It was the electrolyte, it's paste. And because it has these hydroxide molecules in it, it's slightly caustic. And caustic means they can be burned. So you just want to make sure you don't get that paste on your skin. That's more or less it. Right? So I'll summarize again. Um, we had your anode and cathode half equations. You should make sure you know those. The voltage was quite similar, 1.5 for your dry cell, 1.6 for your silver button cell. Cost and practicality, your dry cell was cheap and had a short half-life. Whereas the other one, the silver button cell was had a high cost, but it had a long shelf life, which means we can keep it in things for longer. But it was also quite small, which is good. Impact on society, uh, our dry cells get used a lot, so we need to have those. And our silver button cells get used less often, but they get used for small things where our dry cells will not be able to fit into. Impact on the environment, they both had a very minor, minor impact because they were both non-toxic. But uh, yeah, potassium hydroxide paste was maybe a problem because it could cause burns. And it also says evaluate, so we need to have both of these um, because they both complement each other. We can use a dry cell for the majority of things, but things that are too small, we can use a silver button cells for. But they both have very similar functions. But without them, we wouldn't be able to have all the appliances that we have nowadays. So I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.